Hi, my name is Timo. And I'm Louis. And we're the materials team of 3 Devo. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic, and that is how to actually get started making your own filament with this machine. Because just like with the 3D printer, there are some iteration steps that need to be taken before you can actually start using it. Yes, so to avoid the traps and to find success in your extrusion experiments, we have a list of steps and we're going to go through them together. Let's jump right in. So, the first step is selecting a material. This can be done based on what your application needs are. So, for example, you need a mechanically strong object or it has, just has to look appealing or it needs to be chemically resistant to something. Based on that, you can choose your material. But of course it's also important to know if it's processable. So the material should be printable but also uh, able to be, be extruded on the filament maker. Yeah, that's right. So all the plastics, as you said, have different properties. In addition to this, some of them can be processed more easily with the extrusion. For example, a plastic with a very low viscosity might be very tricky to process on this machine. So it's something to keep in mind. Once you've chosen the plastic you want to be working with, you will find it comes in a variety of different grades. Each grade corresponds to a version of, the, of that plastic. So make sure you find the right grade and the technical data sheet that goes with it. It will help you launch the process of extrusion afterwards. So this might sound a bit complicating and all, it's a, it's a lot of information, but of course we're always here to help. So we offer a lot of information on our website uh, under the materials pyramid. And so we're materials specialists at 3 Devo, so we're always here to help you guide through the process. Our email address is in the description below. Just feel free to contact us anytime. Most thermoplastics are hygroscopic, which means they can absorb moisture in their, inside their structure. Then the presence of that moisture during the process will cause some issues. For example, you could extrude a filament with bubbles. That's something you want to avoid. Yeah, so to avoid this, you need to dry your material. And how do I dry this material? So on the technical data sheet that is usually supplied with your material that you bought, you can find information about how, uh, which temperature you need to dry your material and for how long. And this information you can use to uh, set the air at polymer dryer in or any other drying solution you have available at your facility. So now you've prepared your plastic, you're almost ready to pour it inside the machine. But first, you have to find a good starting point. Choosing the wrong starting point for an extrusion experiment can be very detrimental, time-consuming. For example, if you place your plastic with the wrong temperatures, too low, for example, you might have unmelted particles at the outputs if the plastic doesn't melt fully. In the worst case, the nozzle might pop or you might clog the machine completely. So you need to prevent the material from having unmelted particles, mm -hmm. so that means you should completely melt the entire material. So you need to be uh, sufficiently above the melting point of the polymer. So every material has a melting point, uh, and that's the point where the material becomes completely liquid. And a method we use very often here at the lab of 3 Devo is uh, setting all heaters 10% above the melting point of the, uh, the material. So the melting point can usually be found on the technical data sheet. And here for this type of PLA, it's around 160 degrees. So let's set all heaters 10% above this temperature and then we uh, ensure a sufficient flow of material without any problems. And that's a good starting point for our material test. So keep in mind, from the very first time you're using your machine, the barrel will never be empty again. There's always going to be plastic inside. And to push that plastic out of the machine, you need an input. So if we call that plastic inside A and that plastic here B, you need to make sure that to push A with B, the process settings you're using can melt both of these plastics completely. This way you'll have a safe and smooth transition. Good transitioning material includes HDPE, DevoClean mid-temp and DevoClean high-temp which we provide. Okay, now let's move on to the topic we've all been waiting for, and that is finding the optimal settings for your filament maker. So, just like, as I explained earlier in this video, uh, with the 3D printer you need to find the right settings for your material before you can actually start uh, achieving the results you actually want. In this case, uh, achieving good quality filament. So, for this we first need to determine what settings can we play with, what are the parameters of the machine. 
So for this, let me quickly give you a, a quick recap of the functionality of the machine. So you might already know this, but this is where you put material in, in the hopper. Then it gets pushed forward by the screw. And uh, as a result of friction and the four heaters that are placed around the screw, the material gets completely melted and pushed out the nozzle at the front of this machine. There it gets formed into filament and cooled down by the filament fans. Uh, immediately after that it passes through the optical sensor which measures the real-time thickness every second and based on that data the puller wheels pull it to the desired thickness. The desired thickness can be set in the settings menu over here. So this can either be 175, 285 or anything you want. And it just keeps adjusting uh, the thickness so it, it's, it stays within tolerance. After that it gets guided through the positioner system which guides it to the spooling mechanism to ensure you have a neat spool at the end, a neat spool filament. Now after Timo's explanation we know what parameters we can play with in our extrusion process and those are the four heater temperatures, the screw speed and the fan cooling. So let's have a look together at those parameters. I'm switching the machine on of course. And I can now access the main menu by pressing the button. What you're looking for is the settings menu. So keep in mind the data sheet said that the melting point of the plastic was approximately 160 degrees and we want to start 10% above this to ensure a good melting of all the plastic. To exaggerate this a bit and show you something interesting in just a moment for the sake of teaching, uh, I'm going to start on 200 de degrees Celsius across the whole, the, whole, uh, the whole board of heaters just to show you something. The extruder speed, it's always good to start with 5 RPM. It's a good starting point because usually the, the best extrusion speeds are usually found around 3.5 to 6 RPM. So 5 is a good starting point. As far as the filament fan speed is concerned, keep in mind it's very quick to make adjustments on this one and the effects are immediate. That's why we're going to start with 50% and we'll see in the future how it goes. I scroll all the way down, one up. Don't forget to apply those settings. And now you're ready to start the extrusion. So you access the main menu again, scroll all the way up, and you can start the extrusion automatically. Now the machine is going to heat up, and as soon as it reaches those temperatures, it's going to start extruding. And we'll, we'll analyze together the first output we have. So, we've waited around 10 minutes, I got some coffee. Let's check in the meantime if we got some output. So, let's open the door. And here we see some nice PLA coming out. And I can see that there's no unmelted particles. We have a good, decent flow of material. The only issue is that it's just way too liquid. Like, you can pull it in any shape you want. Instead, uh, it's not filament. So even if I try to put it between the puller wheels, it gets squashed immediately or not even. So at this point, this means that uh, the temperatures are too high because the material is still too liquid. So at this point, we should gradually start decreasing the temperature of the material until we found a sweet spot in where it can finally be retained in the filament shape. Once we've done that, we've determined the right temperature of all the heaters, then we can start building our specific profile. So for example, uh, the, the last heater could be a bit higher or lower than the heaters in the front. And this way you start building the right temperature profile for uh, optimal filament quality and a good stable uh, thickness tolerance. So let's dial that in and wait some more minutes. So patience is the key in this process. Now I think we finally have a good quality output. So to get to this nice output, we went through a series of iter iteration steps, sorry. So starting from 200 degrees, we started decreasing the temperatures because the output was a bit too soft and too squishy, very hard to work with. We decreased the temperatures down to 170 degrees. 
there we noticed that the flow was becoming a bit slower and the output was a bit too solid. So we knew that within the window from 170 to 200 degrees, the right settings sh should be somewhere. Uh, around the sweet spot of 180 degrees, we started to adjust the temperatures of each heater individually. Doing this a few times, we found that the best profile to process this grade of PLA was to use what we call a bell-shaped profile, which means increasingly higher and higher temperatures and then a slightly lower one on the last heater. So that's what we did and that's how we could get this nice output. So during this whole process, we had the filament maker connected to a PC with a USB connection and then we made use of the DevoVision app. And we did this to be able to monitor all the parameters of the machine. So we store and save all this data that we collected from this uh, extrusion test and uh, data about the quality of the produced filament. So for example, if we change some settings, uh, for example, heater number three, we increased it five degrees, then we had to wait for 10 minutes and then see what effect it had on the quality of the produced filament. If we saw that it has a positive effect, but not entirely, maybe based on that data, we uh, in increase uh, the temperature even more. So that, in that, that way we can build the right settings based on the data we're collecting in the DevoVision app. Okay, now we have a very good filament and the perfect settings. It's time to spool it. Now be careful. If you don't do it neatly enough, you might end up with an entangled spool, for example, and that will cause problems during the printing step. So the first step in making a neat spool is setting the right dimensions of your empty spool into the settings menu of the machine. Then the spooling wizard will guide you through all the necessary steps. So let's quickly go through it. So if you go to the settings menu and then to spooling, and let's assume we already put in the right settings for the, for the, for the empty spool. So then we go to start spooling. So it says wait for the filament diameter to be stable. We've already done that, so we can press continue. Now it says guide the filament through the positioner, uh, attach the spool into place, and attach the filament to the spool. So I already placed the empty spool on the spool holder. So I can slide it over this axle and make sure it clicks right to the back so it stays right in position. So now we can cut off the filament as close to the puller wheels as possible, which gives us more time to guide it through the positioner. Make sure it goes through both holes. And during this process it's important to keep on pulling on the filament. For PLA, it's quite easy because it's quite flexible and you can hold it with your bare hands because it's not that hot. But for other materials it can be quite tricky. So it's important to just keep pulling, keep the tension on the filament so it won't clog, clog in the front. And this will give you more time during this process. So now I need to figure a way uh, to attach it to the spool. Uh, so I know that there are tiny holes in the middle of the spool which I can pull the filament through so I'm just gonna cut it off here and guide it right through this hole and then I immediately pull on the filament again to retain the tension so then I can continue and now it says it's building up tension so building up tension is quite important so it is quite tight around the first layer of the spool and this ensures the rest of the layers can be laid neatly over each other during the whole process. So once this is finished we can continue and the pro spooling process has started. So there's one more important step in the spooling process and that is that the, f the spool must not pull on the filament. Remember, the spool must not pull. So, we can adjust this by uh, turning on the tensioner on the back. So you see this little black rotating knob. And what this does is uh, it ensures there is some slip on the spool. Because you don't want the spool to stretch your filament or 
the adjusting uh, step here. So how, how do we check this? By slightly pressing against the spool and then it should stop. So if it doesn't, we need to uh, ensure there's a bit more slip on the spool. That's the case here because I cannot stop it by just pushing against it. So I'm just going to make a few turns anti-clockwise and now you can see I can simply stop the spool by pushing against it. Okay, now you have a nice spool of good filament. You're free to print with it. But don't turn the machine off just yet. Make sure you check the quality of the spool using the Devo Vision app. But most importantly, make sure you purge the machine. Almost all of the plastic cannot be left inside the barrel over a shutdown period. As a matter of fact, only three can be left. PLA, HDPE, and Devo Clean mid temp. Any other plastic must be purged out of the barrel be before you switch the machine off. In the best case, if you don't, you might have some residue and some th elements that will cause and deteri deteriorate sorry, the quality of subsequent processes. In the worst case, the screw might be completely stuck and you might not be able to switch the machine back on on the next day. So make sure you keep the purge in mind. If you are unsure, ask us before we switch the machine off. So, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask us. Or we're always willing here to, to help you through your process. And stay tuned for next videos because we're gonna discuss more advanced topics like uh, high performance materials or additives. So, thank you for watching. My name is Timo. My name is Louis. See you next time. Bye.